Welcome to an episode that's gonna make me sound super darn smart. Happy 4th of July. Did you hear about Facebook using 700,000 of us for an undercover study? An on-staff scientist at Facebook changed the news feeds to show gloomy and depressing posts and status updates, all to see if that kind of information spreads the bad mood. Sure, they found out that yes, it tends to be contagious, it's a lot like how it feels in real life. If I were to come up to you and say hi, and then immediately start Debbie downering you by complaining about third world problems and animal shelters, I am almost positive that you wouldn't feel positive, you'd feel depressed. Isn't it weird how just saying third world problems and animal shelters is depressing? Like, I didn't even have to elaborate. So after being all sneaky and conducting this experiment, everyone ended up really pissed. What does Facebook have to say about it? It was poorly communicated. For that communication, we apologize. We never meant to upset you. I think that's a pretty bad apology, one that does not include any understanding of your actions, Facebook. Then again, even if you claim to never do it again, no one would ever believe you. Facebook is constantly up in arms with privacy cases, because they suck. But we're the ones that use it though, so definitely can't be surprised. A man that suffered from a diving accident causing him to become quadriplegic can now move his arm thanks to a computer chip implant in his brain. This is a cool story. The chip, NeuroBridge, works by reconnecting the brain directly to the muscles, allowing for voluntary and functional control of a limb. It's not a normal movement. It's funny to think that this man is the first person to move his hand with the power of his thoughts, when in physiological reality, it's exactly how you and I make our parts move all the time. Brain make hand move. Now that's a slow hand. The chip is believed to be the first of its kind in linking to the brain in this way. Scientists want to advance the technology to the point of helping stroke and paralysis victims. Get ready, world, because there's gonna be robot people around. That's so cool. Or is it? Going a little deeper down the rabbit hole is bioprinting organs. You've heard of it, I've heard of it. They've done it, but what they haven't been able to do is create blood vessels, which are the most important part for carrying nutrients to the tissue. Researchers at MIT, the University of Sydney, Harvard, and Stanford have experienced a breakthrough and hope to soon print a full organ. This is insane. The coolest part is how this actually freaking works. The cell infused material hardens, the fibers are removed, and there you have it. A complex little network of tiny spaces mimicking capillaries. This can lead to one day printing a true organ as well as organ regeneration. God forbid you'd need a kidney, but you could have one if you want. Finally, this little gadget's name is Sio, I think. Skio? Skio? Sio? Sio. It made over $2 million on Kickstarter, and I'll tell you why. It's a spectrometer. Spectrometers are used in labs, but are super expensive. They absorb light, reflect it back from an object, and turn it into a spectrum. That's why it's called spectrometer. But wait, this guy does more. After you point it at an object, Skyo reads the item's molecular information, then sends it up to the cloud for analysis, and boom, it tells you what the item is. So you got an apple, point and click. It can tell you when the apple will be at its peak ripeness. Wanna know more about a certain medication? It can do that. Sio analyzes anything from food, pharmaceuticals, and horticulture, plants. In the future, it could read fuel tanks, do soil analysis, and even monitor the human body. That is so cool. It's 4th of July weekend. I hope you go play and you have fun. Well, you guys have a good weekend. I'm gonna go play now. Playing.
Thank <laughs> you.